the Big Show. The Big Show. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Big Show. I'm Lobna Barka. And I am Mary May. This show is an interdisciplinary effort of students of public health, meteorology, communication, and journalism. Today, we'll be covering a big weekend of victories, some problems plaguing Long Island, serious disasters, visiting one of the southern neighbors, and the usual mix of weather forecasting and attention to music. Yes, besides being beautiful, this was an amazing weekend. What was surprising was not the fall weather, but the winning ways that took over New York. That's winning as in big sports victory. Let's go to Robert's rundown to the details. What a weekend for New York sports. New York basketball captured their first championship in over 50 years. The New York Liberty knocked off the Minnesota Lynx in a thrilling overtime victory. Despite Sabrina Inescu and Brianna Stewart shooting a combined five for 34 from the field, the Liberty's defensive tenacity carried them to a game five victory. Juan Kel Jones, 17 points and six rebounds last night, capped off her amazing series as she took home the WNBA Finals MVP award. On the backs of sluggers Juan Soto and Gianna Carlo Stanton, the New York Yankees clinched their first pennant and World Series berth in 15 years, 2009. That was, I, I was in kindergarten and now I'm a senior in college. The Stars smashed mammoth home runs in game five against the Guardians to power the Yankees to a 4-1 series victory. And for our Stony Brook Seawolves fans, you can cue up DJ Khaled because this weekend, all they did was win. W after W after W. Billy Kosh's squad went down to Towson and pounced on the Tigers in a huge CAA victory, 52 to 24. The highest point total put on the scoreboard since 2017. Quarterback Tyler Knopp had a career day, 34 for 40 passing, 387 yards of offense, zero interceptions, and a program best, program record, six touchdown passes, six studies for my guy one two. Earlier today, it was announced Knopp earned CAA Offensive Player of the Week. And this weekend, the Seals returned to Kenny P right here on campus for this weekend's homecoming game against William and Mary at 3.30. Make sure to wear your red and be loud. On the volleyball court, the ladies took care of business, sweeping their series with the Elon Phoenix. Huge shout out to Callie Moore, who eclipsed 1,000 career kills. She's just the 13th player in program history to do so. And going back outside onto the soccer pitch, Riley Rich hit the back of the net twice, while Lynn Beck contributed one while cruising to a 3-0 win on senior day against UNC Wilmington, as they clinched a CAA playoff berth. Now the Mets fans, they grimaced as their season came to a close against the Dodgers in game six of the NLCS last night. They were hoping to, to bring game seven back to uh, City Field, but their season's over, unfortunately. And the Yankees hope for a better fate against the Dodgers starting this Friday when the Bronx Bombers travel to Los Angeles for game one of the World Series final. This was an exciting weekend. That's all I have from the world of sports. Let's go to another winner, my friend Lubna, back at the desk. Lubna? Thank you, Robert. That's the good news. Let's call it a winning weekend, but let's turn our attention to way down south, Cuba, where the island has been suffering a lot over the last week. Cuba was experiencing severe crisis as its electrical grid collapsed four times in one week. That left more than 10 million people in the dark. This comes amid widespread shortage of food, fuel, and medicine. Cuban officials, as usual, are blaming everything on the big imperialist monster up north, the, no the United States. Meanwhile, to add insult to injury, Hurricane Oscar made landfall in eastern Cuba. This, of course, complicated the blackout, and its strong winds and heavy rain further crippling the already strained power grid. The island is now grappling with even greater challenges as it seeks solutions to these compounding disasters. All right, enough for the tragedy. Let's have Adrian tell us something about today's weather. Hello, Sea Wolves. I'm Adrian Esposito here with your daily weather report. Is Hurricane Oscar coming our way? No. He may be a grouch, but not in our backyard. 
Anyway, it's officially spooky season, and you know what that means, unpredictable weather. So today, it's beautiful right now, with a high of 76 and a low of 43. Make sure you layer up for that 30 degree temperature differential as bugs fly into my face. We have homecoming later this week, so stick around for the weather for that day. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Adrian. Well, our favorite sports team may be winners, but the more I listen to my fellow commuter students, the more I get the sense that the students are the big losers in the big game of musical chair that we all call on campus parking. Our investigative team, Isha and Manny, report. Stony Brook University is known for their prestigious education topping all public universities in New York and is leading the change in climate solutions as they were selected as an anchor institute for New York City on Governor's Island. But wait, wait, wait. They can accomplish all of this, but they can't seem to figure out an affordable and simple solution to the campus's ongoing preposterous parking problem. I mean, if you're really like desperate to try to like get to class really on time and you hate taking the bus for some reason, I still don't think $90 and $120 is worth the parking. Myself, uh, I'm a resident student. I actually live at Tubman and uh, I only have to pay $100 per semester to uh, for parking. But I know for uh, commuter students, uh, every time they park, they have to uh, pay a certain amount of money. I, don't, I actually don't know the price, but I know it definitely adds up after a while. And, and I bet they don't get uh, the same spots as us. I feel like it could be unfair to them. You know, I'm, I'm parked very close to, to my hall, and I bet commuter students, you know, have to walk maybe a, a bit farther, and it's a bit unfair. This campus is freaking huge, so you definitely need some, you definitely need some sort of transportation to, to get around. I've been going here for about four or five years now, so um, I'm pretty experienced with the whole commuting scene. Um, I've had all different types of parking passes, and uh, you know, today I'm paying for the meter because, in my opinion, that's kind of the better way to go about things. It's more convenient, and um, yeah, that's generally my opinion regarding that. Luckily, at least right now, I'm not on campus as much, um, but. For me, I feel like it wouldn't really be worth it to buy a parking pass for, you know, say, 100 plus bucks just to get something that I personally used to have for free. You know, I've been here, going here for a while, and I think a good example of sort of the plight of the students here is the fact that um, the gym lot over there right by the Island Federal Stadium, that used to be free. Um, the LIRR over there used to be free at one point. Um, and I just don't really think it's right that students are being charged for something that we used to have for free. And I've done the whole South P taking the bus thing. And to be honest, when you're a student taking a lot of credits, it's kind of an arduous commute. You have to plan accordingly uh, like an hour before your class. And some people have classes at 8 a.m. They're coming all the way from Queens or even further than me. And I'm lucky I'm 20 minutes away, but it could be a lot worse for others. So that's kind of why I opt to just pay the five dollars for two hours or you know two dollars and fifty cents for a quick hour if i have to do something just for the whole convenience factor this is just simply atrocious i don't understand this i feel like i shouldn't be having to pay for parking when i already pay for so much but parking enforcement is not getting me today not today so i guess i just have to cough up my money The people who could bring about change to the matter turned down an interview, but had something to say on the matter. The executive director of Mobility and Parking Services stated that the tiered parking permit model changes will support the necessary work for our service lots, including pothole repair, filling cracks, sealant, and resurfacing. Moving forward with students, paid parking will help us begin an important capital work and repair in residential parking areas. And Stony Brook's parking services are self-funded, which means tuition dollars, student broad-based fees, and SUNY funding are not allocated to support our operations. This has been an ongoing issue where students either have to pay a lot of money semesterly or pay in small increments daily. And that is an ongoing issue that, unfortunately, until the campus decides to have a middle ground with students, is something that students will have to deal with and pick their poison. Unless they want to be like me and rack up a bunch of parking tickets, which I don't think is a good idea. 
I'm Isha Butt in Stony Brook. I'll see you guys back in the studio. Thank God I don't have a car and don't have to worry about the parking tickets. Mary, I do have a car and I have been warned parking is going to be a nightmare this weekend. That's because it's homecoming. They are closing some parking lots for delegating entertainment and rides starting Thursday night. Thanks for the heads up, Lubna. It sounds like it's going to be a busy weekend. Now onto something more concerned for Long Island. Have you ever been worried about the ordinary water we drink every day? Well, there is a problem here. Look around and see how beautiful the grass is on Long Island. What makes the grass green is nitrogen fertilizer, but it has become harmful to water quality. Despite Long Island's natural beauty, fertilizer is leaking nitrogen into the water, causing serious damage. For more information, let's turn over to Maya. I'm here in Oakdale, New York, right on the Great South Bay. The water appears to be quite clean, quite blue. Apparently, however, there's more to it than meets the eye. Today, I had the pleasure of attending a guest lecture series hosted by Saving the Great South Bay, where Stony Brook University professor Dr. Christopher Gobler presented the state of the waterways here on Long Island. With the question of clean water on the forefront of our minds, Dr. Gobler went into depth telling us why it's actually important to have clean water. We're surrounded by surface waters and, you know, the groundwater is the water we drink. And, um, you know, so keeping that water clean is super important. Every time you turn on the tap or you drink that water, you want it to be clean and healthy. Among other things, Dr. Gobler went in depth about the Vibrio vulnificus, a flesh-eating bacteria found here in Suffolk County. He also covered an alternative cesspool waste management system meant to offset the nitrogen footprint. Robin Silvestri is the executive director of Save the Great South Bay, the organization who put this whole event together. We're seeing with uh, warming temperatures, sea level rise, and the onslaught of nitrogen that's coming off of the mainland, water quality is degrading in the Great South Bay, and we need to address that right away for, for the current generation, but for future generations also to enjoy. From Oakdale, New York, I'm Maya Duclay for The Big Show. Thank you, Maya. You've just raised my water consciousness. I'm now worried about what makes the grass so green on Long Island. Now, let's welcome our ACE meteorologist, Jason Kittergrad. Jason? Thanks, Mary. As you've heard from Adrian, Hurricane Oscar will not be a threat for us in the coming days. But today's a beautiful day, as shown behind me from our friends at EarthCam. Um, today, we have temperatures in the high 70s, and this will carry through for the next few days. Wednesday, also in the 70s low 55, and a few clouds will, will be experienced this day. Thursday and Friday, the temperatures start, start to cool down considerably. Lows are, in the 40, uh, lows are in the 40s. Saturday, I know it's our homecoming. However, uh, there is a, there's a chance of some showers in the morning that should dissipate by the afternoon. And with a low of 42, if that's not enough to bust out your winter jacket, then the 30 mile per hour gusts on Sunday certainly will. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Jason. You're always on top of the weather. In closing, we begin our show with some winning news, and now in tragic news. Former One Direction me band member Liam Payne has passed away at the age of 31. Payne's death has shocked fans. Tributes are coming in as friends and colleagues remember his talent and joyful spirit. His memory will live on forever in millions of hearts around the world. And that's it for today's Big Show. See you guys next week. This is, is the, the Big, big show. show. The Big Show.